Hi everyone, thanks for tuning into Clay Basics with Studio 550. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pinch pot, some problems that people run into while they're making pinch pots and how you can avoid them, and then I'm going to show you some cool things that you can do with your pots once they're finished. So we're going to start off by making a pinch pot. Right here I have a nice round ball of clay, it's about the size of a peach. If your ball of clay is not quite round, you can take both hands, cup them, and pat your ball of clay as you turn it, and that will give you nice even sides. The next thing you want to do is get rid of any of these lumps or creases. So you're going to take your thumb and move it across the top in a circular motion. It doesn't need to be perfect, but we want to get rid of big differences on the surface before you keep going. Your next step is to take your thumb and stick it down into the middle of your ball of clay. This is going to create the opening you're going to start from. You want to stick your thumb as far down as it can go without punching through because we want to make sure we don't leave a bunch of extra clay in the bottom. Here's a little cross section to show you what your proportion should look like. So now you're going to pinch between your thumb, your pointer finger, and your middle finger. Your thumb is going to go at the bottom and you're going to pinch as you turn. See how my hands are making a pattern on the outside? It's repetitive and it's consistent. That's going to give me nice even walls. Once I've made it all the way around, I move my fingers up and I continue pinching as I turn it and I'm still trying to keep that pattern going nice and evenly spaced. Now I'm going to move my fingers up a little bit more just into the rim and I'm going to continue pinching until I get all the way around and then I want to check the rim. See those little cracks in the split at the top? I want to get rid of those by moving my thumb across the top in a circular motion. If the cracks aren't going away you might need to dip your finger and add a little bit of water or you might need to start over. Once your rim is smoothed out, you can go back down and start pinching again from the bottom as you rotate your hands to get it a little bit thinner. On the second rotation, I try and pinch in between where my finger marks were before to get rid of any of the thicker spots. How thick or how thin you want your pinch pot to be is up to you. If you're going to use it for sculpting, you want to leave it a little bit on the thicker side. If it's just going to be a pinch pot for the sake of making something, then try and make it as thin as you can. It's a nice fun challenge and it's a really relaxing thing to do. If you are going for a really thin pot, Sometimes you need to set it aside after the second rotation so that it's not too floppy as it gets thin. Give it five or 10 minutes to set up and then keep going. All right, so now that you've seen how to make pinch pots, let me show you some of the problems that people commonly run into and how you can avoid them. Let's first look at a perfect pinch pot so we know what we're shooting for. This pinch pot has a nice round curve to it, nice even walls, a nice round rim. You don't see any little cracks in there, it's nice and smooth. And the outside is also nice and smooth. There's no big lumps. So this pinch pot was made with patience and care, nice even movements, and then plenty of time was taken to smooth out the rim afterwards. This first problem pinch pot really just isn't done yet. You can see that there's a thin spot right here, a thick spot up here. The rim is not quite round and there's lots of little cracks and bumps on the outside. If you've got something like this, all you need to do is spend a little bit more time on it. Pinch a little bit more in the thicker spots, avoid the thin spots, and make sure you take the time to smooth out the rim. If you want it to get thinner after that, set it aside if it's feeling kind of lumpy and squishy. All right, now this pinch pot is too wide on the top and a little bit too thick on the bottom. This happens if you start pinching from the top instead of the bottom, or if you pinch too hard to begin with. There's lots of little cracks in the rim that can still get smoothed out, but if you're going for that rounder shape, Make sure you start pinching from the bottom and work your way up instead of working your way from the top down. All right, now let's look at a pinch pot that does not use materials efficiently. Can you see how thick the bottom is? That just means that when this was made, the hole was not deep enough. I showed you this cross section when we were first starting the pinch pot so you could see how deep you want to go. And you can see the difference when I hold them up next to each other. There's nothing super wrong about this pinch pot because the top is nice and even and there's no cracks in it, but it's not going to get as big as it could with this amount of clay. If you want to make tiny pinch pots, use less clay instead of leaving extra in the bottom. Now this pinch pot is fairly even in its walls, but you can see that the bottom is really flat. The problem with this is that it was made on the table like this, turning and pinching from the top instead of cupping it in your hands. That always makes the bottom really flat, usually makes it a little bit thicker than it should be, and usually results in a pinch pot that has a shape like this for its profile instead of something nice and round like this. And now the last pinch pot I'm going to show you was just made a little bit too fast. 
you can see all those splits and cracks in the top. That means that it was pinched too hard on that first rotation. Remember, you can always go back and make it thinner, but if you make it too thin to start, it's going to cause a lot of weakness in the rim and it's going to be a lot harder to fix. So take your time, go slow, and enjoy the process. Take a deep breath with every pinch and make it a meditation. It's really enjoyable that way. Now that you know how to make pinch pots, let's talk about some of the different things you can use them for. Pinch pots can be turned into everyday objects like these by adding a handle afterwards and doing some of the final details. You could turn it into a bowl like this by adding a coil on the bottom so that it doesn't rock back and forth and it's nice and steady on the table. If you're going to turn a pinch pot into tableware, consider the shape of the rim and how thick it is. We like our tableware to be nice and thin and even, so spend a little bit more time on things that you think you might want to eat out of. If you're excited by the idea of sculpting, then pinch pots are a great jumping off point for you. You can turn a pinch pot on its side to make the belly of a bear or the mouth of a monster. An overturned pinch pot makes a great shell for a turtle. And if you're feeling really creative, you can turn the bottom part into a little box. Or you can just have an upright pinch pot and add a little sculpture to the outside. Whatever you're feeling, you can do with pinch pots. We hope this video inspires you to make some awesome clay projects at home. If you'd like to show us what you're working on, we're on Instagram at Studio 550 or Facebook, and we'd love to see what you're doing. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.